Good morning. Today is Friday, the 24th of September, and those who follow are, are aware of the Jewish calendar. We're in the middle of a week-long celebration of Sukkot, which is, if you'll recognize it from our, our Bibles, uh, the festival of tabernacles, or also sometimes referred to as the Feast of Booths. And you may recall from the story in the scriptures in the New Testament of the transfiguration at Mount Tabor. And when it's told Jesus, let us prepare booths for you and Moses and Elijah, uh, some commentators believe that because of uh, that reference to preparing a booth or a tent, uh, there may have been in the season of Sukkot, this week-long Jewish celebration of tabernacles of uh, and um, that that may have been what was in mind when the offering of building a tent or a tabernacle for Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. Well, let us continue with our opening sentence from Isaiah chapter 57, verse 15. Thus says the one who is high and lifted up, who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place, and also with him who is of contrite and lowly spirit, to revive the spirit of the lowly, and to revive the heart of the contrite. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things we ought to have done, and we have done those things we ought not to have done, and apart from your grace there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent, according to your promises declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the depths of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Psalm 41 Blessed is the one who considers the poor and needy. The Lord shall deliver him in the time of trouble. The Lord preserves him and keeps him alive, that he may be blessed upon earth and delivers him not over to the will of his enemies. The Lord comforts him when he lies sick upon his bed, and restores him from his bed of sickness. I said, Lord, be merciful to me, heal my soul, for I have sinned against you. My enemies speak evil of me. When shall he die, and his name perish? And if any one comes to see me, he speaks empty words in his heart, conceives falsehood within him, and when he goes forth he tells it. All my enemies whisper together against me, even against me are they devising evil. A deadly thing has taken hold of him, and now he lies down and he will rise up no more. Indeed, 
even my own familiar friend, whom I trusted, who also ate my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. But be merciful to me, O Lord. Raise me up again, and I shall repay them. By this I know you favor me, that my enemy does not triumph over me. And when I am in health, you uphold me, and shall set me before your face forever. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings, beginning with the fourteenth chapter, the first verse. Before I begin, I want to remind you, uh, just to, as we read through this, just the sort of quick, brief history. Um, David had a son, Solomon, who reigned after him. We know this. And Solomon reigned a united kingdom. That is, the kingdom that David, um, he inherited the kingdom from David, and, and under Solomon he had, for the most part, peace and prosperity. But because of Solomon's sin, God said that the kingdom would be ripped from him uh, through his descendant, and that the kingdom, in essence, would be divided. And so we have Solomon's death, and then he is succeeded by his son, his son uh, Jeroboam. And um, his son, um, excuse me, I said Rehoboam, Rehoboam. And his son reigns in Israel and Judah, the area surrounding Israel. And he is a descendant. He's the great grandson, if you will, of David. That's Rehoboam. But you remember in our lessons, Rehoboam took the advice of his young counselors who said, be harsh to the people. Say that the, the burden of, day, of, of my father Solomon was tough. I'm going to make it tougher. And because of that, the, 12, uh, the ten tribes rebelled. That is the northern kingdom. And the northern, northern kingdom rebelled against Rehoboam and became what's called Israel. So you have the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. And the northern kingdom is reigned by Jeroboam. And so Jeroboam reigns the northern kingdom, ten tribes, and um, his, uh, and, and, and uh, Rehoboam uh, reigns in Judah and Israel and is a continuation of the promises made to David. I tell you that because we're going to be dealing with both of these kings. And ever, when, once the kingdom divides, it becomes very confusing on who is who. Who are we talking about? Northern kingdom, southern kingdom. Which king? Is this a king of the northern kingdom or a king of the southern kingdom? And so I just want to give you that background as we begin now from the first book of Kings, beginning with the 14th chapter, the first verse. At, the, at that time, Abijah, the son of Jeroboam, king of the northern kingdom, fell sick. And Jeroboam said to his wife, Arise, and disguise yourself, that it not be known that you are the wife of Jeroboam, and go to Shiloh. Behold, Ahijah the prophet is there, who said of me that I should be king over this people. Take with you ten loaves, some cakes, and a jar of honey, and go to him. He will tell you what shall happen to the child. Jeroboam's wife did so. She arose and went to Shiloh, and came to the house of Ahijah. Now, Ahijah could not see, for his eyes were dim because of his age. And the Lord said to Ahijah, Behold, the wife of Jeroboam is coming to inquire of you concerning her son, for he is sick. Thus and thus shall you say to her. When she came, she pretended to be another woman. But when Ahijah heard the sound of her feet, as she came in at the door, he said, Come in, wife of Jeroboam. Why do you pretend to be another? For I am... I am charged with unbearable news for you. Go tell Jeroboam, this says the Lord, the God of Israel. 
Because I exalted you from among the people and made you leader over my people, Israel, and tore the kingdom away from the house of David and gave it to you, and yet you have not been like my servant David, who kept my commandments and followed me with all his heart, doing only that which was right in my eyes. But you have done evil above all who were before you, and have gone and made for yourself other gods and metal images, provoking me to anger, and have cast me behind your back. Therefore, behold, I will bring harm upon the house of Jeroboam, and I will cut off from Jeroboam every male, both bond and free, in Israel, and will burn up the house of Jeroboam as a man burns up dung until it is all gone. Any one belonging to Jeroboam who dies in the city, the dogs shall eat. And any one who dies in the open country, the birds of the heaven shall eat. And the Lord has spoken it. Arise, therefore, go to your house. When your feet enter the city, the child shall die. And all Israel shall mourn for him and bury him. For he only of Jeroboam shall come to the grave, because in him there is found something pleasing to the Lord, the God of Israel, in the house of Jeroboam. Moreover, the Lord will raise up for himself a king over Israel, who shall cut off the house of Jeroboam today. And henceforth the Lord will strike Israel as a reed is shaken in the water, and root up Israel out of this good land that he gave to their fathers, and scatter them beyond the Euphrates, because they have made their Asherim, provoking the Lord to anger. And he shall give Israel up because of the sins of Jeroboam, which he sinned and made Israel to sin. Then Jeroboam's wife arose and departed, and came to Tisra. And as she came to the threshold of the house, the child died. And all Israel buried him, and mourned for him, according to the word of the Lord, which was spoken by his servant Ahijah the prophet. Now the rest of the acts of Jeroboam, how he warred, and how he reigned, behold, they are written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel. And the time that Jeroboam reigned was twenty-two years, and he slept with his fathers, and Nadab his son reigned in his place. And now the message is of the southern kingdom, the kingdom of Judah. Now Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, reigned in Judah. Rehoboam was forty-one years old when he began to reign, and he reigned seventeen years in Jerusalem, the city that the Lord had chosen out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. His mother's name was Nama, the Ammonite. And Judah did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. And they provoked him to jealousy with their sins that they committed, more than all that their fathers had done. For they built for themselves high places and pillars, and Asherim on every high hill, and under every green tree. And there they made male cult prostitutes in the land. They did according to all the abominations of the nations that the Lord drove out before the people of Israel. In the fifth year of King Rehoboam, Shishak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem. He took away the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house. He took away everything. He also took away all the shields of gold that Solomon had made. And King Rehoboam made in their place shields of bronze and committed them to the hands of the officers of the guard who kept the door of the king's house. And as often as the king went into the house of the Lord, the guard carried them and brought them back to the guard room. Now the rest of the acts of Rehoboam and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? And there was war between Rehoboam and Jeroboam continually. And Rehoboam slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. His mother's name was Nama the Ammonite, and Abijah his son, Abjam his son, reigned in his place. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion and to our God, 
for he were richly pardoned. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed, and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from the Epistle to the Hebrews, beginning with the twelfth chapter, the eighteenth verse. 4. You have not come to what may be touched, a blazing fire, and darkness, and gloom, and a tempest, and the sound of a trumpet, and a voice whose words make the hearers beg, and no further messages be spoken to them. For they could not endure the order that was given. If even a beast touches the mountains, it shall, it shall be stoned. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion, and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem and to innumerable angels in festal, festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See that you do not refuse him who is speaking to you. For if... They did not escape when they refused him, who warned them on earth. Much less will we escape if we reject him who warns from heaven. At that time his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, Yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but all the heavens. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of things that are shaken, that is, things that have been made, in order that the things that cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, and thus let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God, for you created everything that is and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God from every family, language, people, and nation a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb be worship and praise, dominion and splendor for ever and for ever more. Please bow with me in prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill us in our souls, in our hearts and minds, to the very core of our bodies and our intellect. Fill us, O Holy Spirit, with your grace and presence, revealing and writing the will of God unto our hearts strengthening our faith and our desire to learn more through your scriptures and to live a life of righteousness to the glory of Jesus and empowered by you. Amen. I want to hold before you the first lesson today is a passing of time. I mentioned as I was introducing things, we have David, king, who was made king to replace Saul, if you remember. And so from Saul to David, from David to Solomon, and then Solomon to um, Rehoboam, oh gosh, now I've forgotten his name, thank you, George, uh, to Rehoboam, who reigned in Judah, 
and all of Israel until he calls to rebellion, a civil war, because he was going to subject the people to harsher things, not not grace. And so Rehoboam reign, reigns, reigns the kingdom of Judah and uh, the southern kingdom, and Jeroboam reigns Israel, the northern kingdom. And then we have in their lesson today from the Old Testament where they both die. Uh, both, if you note, note have sinned, uh, but the punishment for um, Rehoboam is, um, excuse me, of, of Jeroboam is that his lineage will end. There'll be another king raised up. Uh, we are told that Nadab, his son, reigns in place, but we're told that will be a short reign, that that entire family will will bear the punishment for their sins. And so we have the death of Jeroboam, and then we have the death of Rehoboam in Judah, and then his son, who will reign uh, following the lineage of David, if you will. Um, Abijam reigns in his place. Now, <clears throat> I want you to recognize something. As an empire declines, so do the values of the empire. In fact, one could argue the values of the empire declining results in the decline of the empire. But in any event, notice what Solomon made for the temple. Uh, what Solomon made for the temple was coated in gold and so forth. But once it was taken away by the king of Egypt, it was replaced by bronze. You're seeing the decline of empire. It wasn't replaced by gold, but by bronze, a cheaper material. And, and notice how bronze sort of shines like gold and looks like gold, but it has to be polished and it's not gold. And so you're watching the decline of empire, if you will, uh, very quickly after the death of Solomon. In Hebrews, what I want you to compare that with is the author of Hebrews is talking about the kingdom of Christ that Jesus inaugurates as a new covenant. And here's the point. As we look at the kingdoms of men, yes, kings that are supposed to represent God, but they don't. A people who are rep supposed to represent God, but they don't. They fail and their kingdoms fail. Well, here we have the promise of the kingdom that Christ inaugurates through his precious blood and death and sacrifice and resurrection from the cross and him going as mediator of a new covenant in verse 24. We have a kingdom. Look at verse 28. Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And thus, let us, let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe. You see, the difference is when we look for salvation, if we look for efforts that are human-based and human-centered, um, human humanistic, it will, it will fall. Humans are sinners. Uh, there are times that we can rise high, but ultimately, um, just look at history. But when we look at a kingdom based on Christ, on God, that kingdom will not be shaken. So again, what's presented to us today is the option. Choose which kingdom you will serve. Choose which kingdom you will belong to. Yes, we're born in a secular kingdom. We live in a secular world. But you and I, as Christians, are sons and daughters of the king. We are of the heavenly country. That's our citizenship. And so we I should understand that ultimately we should be grateful for this kingdom inaugurated by Christ in the new covenant that cannot be shaken. Uh, we'll continue with the Apostles' Creed. I apologize for George. We have company, and George is in the office with me, and he, of course, wants to be with me until there's an opportunity to go be with someone else. And so he's uh, locked out or locked in, and... Uh, is displaying his displeasure over that. Let's continue now with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us, and lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness, and let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people, and bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and take not your Holy Spirit from us. O Lord, you have taught us that without love all our deeds are worth nothing. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts the most excellent gift of charity, that is love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who alone works great marvels, send down upon our clergy and the congregations committed to their charge the life-giving spirit of your grace. Shower them with the continual dew of your blessing and ignite in them a zealous love of your gospel. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite your prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings as the Holy Spirit places upon your hearts. Uh, I continue to ask for your prayers for the election of our Bishop Coadjutor, the one to replace our Bishop Mark upon his retirement, uh, the candidates and their families and the places where they serve, uh, Chip Edgar, who serves at, as Dean at Holy Apostles in, in Columbia, at the cathedral there in Columbia, for Chris Warner, who is the rector of uh, Holt Church of Holy Cross, Sullivan's Island, and for Rob Sturdy, who is the chaplain uh, and former rector uh, of Trinity Myrtle Beach, but currently the chaplain uh, at the Citadel. So please pray for these three men. And uh, also, uh, I just, uh, I'll be quiet at this point, but I do want to say thank you for your prayers for healing. Uh, Debbie and Albert have been taking good care of me, and um, I'm feeling much better today. Not 100%, but we're moving in the right direction. Let us pray. Please join with me in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise 
not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church, in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. See you tomorrow. Have a wonderful and blessed day.